Hey folks, Joseph Ace of Bora here. It's been a hectic week lately. Uh, starting on Friday, uh, after I review Commando that I got recently from Amazon. Yeah, I will review the, the other Schwarzenegger film uh, later. Uh, but I just haven't watched it yet, and I will. <laughs> okay, well, let's get right to it. What happened to me was very scary and horrifying. I got locked from the inside of my bedroom door. Uh, what happened was uh, my mom and my sister were asking for some things that, that they need and then suddenly she closes the door and I was going to open the door to see maybe if I can check on something and then all of a sudden it got stuck. Uh, the doorknob got jammed. I tried to the swing it from the left and right and it won't budge. Turns out it was the deadbolt that got stuck in the lodge. Yeah. And we had to use all the tools that we need to bust it open. Yeah, with no such luck. I mean it was getting hot in here in the room. I had to put the air conditioner on. I was sweating. I was frightening. I was terrified about this. I was afraid I was going to get stuck forever. I didn't want that. So with all the the tools we had to use, I mean, nothing works until I decided to take out the knife and just try to take the doorknob out of there as soon as possible, which is hidden inside these two um, screws. I had to find a way to use a I had to use a screwdriver trying to get those screws out wasn't easy and then finally we, we took that out but I was still stuck so we had to find a way to take out the, the lodge out from the deadbolt and we pull it out and finally we were f I was free <laughs> yeah what a relief but there was a, a big hole onto where the doorknob is at and then we had to get a brand new doorknob to replace it and and yeah it was a mess I mean there was a lot of um, chisels and and uh, mark a lot of markings around mostly for the knife that we had to put in just to move around the deadbolt out of there but yeah it was such a nightmare so then we had to put some plaster. Yeah, we had to put a lot of plaster. We had to put some paint on it to, to cover it before we had to end up connecting the new uh, doorknob uh, with the deadbolt lodged together. And perfect. So now I get to open and close the door. Yeah, you know, move around with the doorknob, and I even get to lock it too and unlock it. But no hassles at all. Finally, yeah. Then of course, my mom's birthday. Um, we just had to celebrate it, you know, going out to eat at that pizza place called Toppers, same place I went to on my birthday. Yeah, it was in uh, Valencia. Uh, it's a very good place. Um, has a lot of delicious pizza and all. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, to make it up for it, uh, I finally got two Blu-rays as opposed to all the other Blu-rays I've been getting recently you know, from Amazon. And I also went to Dollar Tree too to get more. Yeah, I mean, I've been getting more Blu-rays and more movies and stuff than ever, but you get the idea. But the one thing I've been wanting to do, I mean, since I finally got it, and I'm going to show you right now. I finally got Grimm's Fairy Tale Classics Season 1 on Blu-ray for the very first time in decades. I can't believe it. And I'm actually honing this in the palm of my hands. And to join in with it, I also got Moncoli Knights. And this is the Japanese version because 
They don't have the English dub version available at this point on, but I hope this company does release it. Yeah, it's released by Discotech, Media, and Eastern Star. You know, the same guys have released some more anime, uh, including Samurai Pizza Cats, uh, probably one of the first releases to have the SD on BD. Yeah, so that means you get to put standard format on a Blu-ray that's on one disc of BD-50. And yes, yeah, so you get to put like tons of episodes on one disc. And not in high definition, but that's okay. It, it just proves that we don't need that. Um, I'll review this one later, just to explain. But I definitely want to review this one right away. And here's why. <laughs> I grew up watching the series when it aired on Nickelodeon, part of the special delivery block in 1989. Well, it originally came out in Japan in 1987, known as Grimm's Masterpiece Feeder. It's an anthology series, you know, focusing all your favorite fairy tales uh, that were based upon the, the Brothers Grimm. You know, you got Snow White. Hansel and Gretel, Puss in Boots, uh, The Frog Prince, Cinderella, you name it. Got tons of episodes to join in. Um, well, for season one, um, you get only 18 episodes that are English dub, and all of which were from Saban International. But it also comes with the Japanese version that was released um, from the Japan DVD that came out in in the uh, mid 2000s yeah and so now you get to see them exactly how it was originally attended to and those are the ones that were digitally remastered so it's really cool to finally see this I saw this when I was four years old uh, when my parents had cable yes we had cable for the first time I, I had it when I was like free, I believe. Um, yeah, because we had select TV, the pay TV service, and so we had to make the switch. It was Samon's Communications at the time, and before uh, Marcus Cable, Charter Communications, and Spectrum. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of cable companies have changed, but it was the only way I get to see the show, and this is really cool. I mean, Nickelodeon had played a lot of. Uh, different shows from many countries around as opposed to all their produced shows that they have you know like Double Dare and even you know ones that were produced in Canada like you can't do that on television that's how they they got the slime and they had like uh, various uh, programs to, to choose I mean they even got you know shows like Inspector Gadget, Heatcliff and they even got Looney Tunes and, and all. And this was the first kids network and you get to watch everything that's available. Um, but anyway, let's get to this review. Um, I'm just going to get into details with the video and the audio quality that, that's available. This comes in this nice uh, cover art that they chose. Yeah, it looks pretty generic that they use. It's all in brown. Uh, but you can see the castle. Yeah, you can barely see it at this point. Uh, they put in this nice slip cover. It looked like the kind of slip cover they use from Lionsgate. Yeah, you can see the the spoiled princess from the Frog Prince. But on the back, yeah, you can see screenshots of all the episodes uh, from season one. This is exactly what you remember. You know, like you got Little Red Riding Hood up here. You got, of course, Hansel and Gretel and uh, the Golden Goose. The Traveling Musicians of Brenham. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, there's Old Sultan and Snow White and all the rest. Uh, they're all included here. And it even has a description saying, Let your imagination soar with the wings of a fairy. Yeah, they put it in, in this particular font. It says, Return to an enchanted time where witches, fairies, and demons live among royalty and common folk alike. And both human greed and kindness serves as a catalyst for supernatural events. Eighteen of the best fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm and other Arthurs are presented in this anime anthology. 
Some are famous, such as Snow White and Cinderella, and some are lesser known, like The Water of Life and King Frostbeard, which is King Grizzle's beard. But even familiar stories have new twists that will entertain viewers of all ages. It includes two episodes that have never been broadcast before in North America, Blue Beard and The Naughty Spirit. I'm going to get to that. This first season collection includes all 24 episodes in standard definition with the original Japanese language and English subtitles. It also includes the original English dubs. And, yep, this is where I'm going to get to. Yes, it's in full frame. 1 by 33.1 original aspect ratio. 480p standard definition. Yep, the audio has... Uh, the Japanese Dolby Digital 2.0 Dual Mono along with English Dolby Digital 2.0 Dual Mono and the subtitles are English, Science and Songs so that's what's included on this set right here just the same as usual <laughs> you open it up on this um, hard press case and there you go yes you can see the characters <laughs> And there's no um, reversible inserts on here, but that's okay. Uh, didn't need to be. Um, just looking up again just to see how it goes. Okay. So this is a lovely set to own. And um, just so you know, <laughs> I just found out this week that Season 2 is going to be available on pre-order. For like 32.47 at the right stuff, and I think it's going to be on set on pre-order on Amazon, which that's exactly where I got this from, <laughs> and I'm happy to own it because I've been waiting for this series to come out on physical media for a very long time, and I wanted to have this in the best quality ever, and I'm going to explain it right now with this release. When I watched the Blu-ray. Before it got released, though, uh, they just had this available on Amazon Prime, yes. And I did show you a little bit of a clip of it before I had to edit this out on my channel because typical YouTube and their copyright infringement policy, which needs to stop. Um, I, I've been waiting for this long to finally have this in the best quality ever. Over the years, like decades ago I actually uh, bought a DVD set it's a bootleg of course of the series uh, from eBay because it was the only way to get the entire show this way all which are VHS uh, recordings um, mostly from Nickelodeon of course because that's the only channel that aired this they also aired this in several countries too like Latin America I bet the UK aired this too and other several locations around in the countries. But of course it's from Japan and all. Uh, they went from good to decent, mediocre to terrible, and even its worst quality. Uh, it was incomplete mostly because they didn't have Bluebeard, the episode. Um, yeah, they claimed that it was never broadcast in North America yeah, due to the dark content that they had yeah that's true because Bluebeard is a very dark story and interesting enough uh, they had a modified version to be included on this Blu-ray set so that's even better and something I never thought I would see because this was actually available on the UK DVD it was released by uh, a, a newspaper called Mirror. Uh, they had the Daily Mirror and the, the Sunday uh, Mirror. So that's where they started selling all these DVDs of various episodes of the show. But it was the only way to actually get Bluebeard. Um, yeah, and I finally got to see that and yeah, it was very dark and very interesting too because it is a story about this man who gives this woman a key to to unlock uh, some some precious stuff that they have hidden inside the castle but of course it'll lead to a lot of forbidden secrets that 
that he warned him not to open because otherwise, you know, they'll be killed. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I mean, this was an evil man. But they had to find a way to stop him. Okay. <laughs> As for the naughty spirit, I, I'm assuming this did air it on Nickelodeon. It might have been banned, I'm not so sure. But it was on my DVD, so there's proof on that. So I don't know how they actually got that wrong, or I don't know, I, I could be wrong too, but you never know. I Internet does make mistakes, especially a company for um, like Disco Tech and Eastern Star. I mean, maybe they just, they must have got the, the information from somewhere, but I wasn't expecting to see that. Okay. <laughs> um, now, now I'm just going to talk about the the video and audio quality right here. Uh, yes, the transfer on the English dub version is incredibly solid. Um, might have been taken from the Japanese uh, prints, yeah, from those DVDs and all. They were all digitally remastered anyway. I actually had to do those. Um, <laughs> By, you know, when I was on YouTube at the time, yeah, because I posted all the episodes on YouTube on my channel. Yes, I actually was the one to do so, and I know everyone else was doing the same, too. Because uh, that was before my suspension. I had to move it to other various uh, video sites like Daily Motion. I, I had to take all these uh, episodes from Japanese uh, that were posted from the DVD that they put on YouTube and I started to blend it in, do some editing and stuff, trying to compare with the other video and just to make it just right and then I had to use the English audio directly from the VHS tape which I know some of them didn't sound that great but it was the only way to go so I had to do my options by using Windows Movie Maker to put together and then I even used the titles to match up with it so it look exactly particularly right. So, but kudos to uh, Disco Tech and Eastern Star to actually put them all together because the transfer looks incredibly stunning, exactly how it should be. They look a lot better than all the old broadcast masters around, but they're lucky enough to keep the, the intro and outro together to, to match it right. And the audio is I'm shocked it was actually incredibly stunning compared to what I saw in the recent um, Amazon stream uh, for only a few episodes uh, one was for Puss in Boots um, the other was for the six who went far in the world and and the other one is the Naughty Spirit so yes that's when I noticed the audio sounds pretty low it, it had a tinny sound to it because it had to be taken from the VHS uh, recordings and it just didn't sound right you could tell there was a lot of problems there so I'm hoping that they'll have the guts to remaster that audio maybe they'll find a master print somewhere from those DVDs and see if they could put it together exactly how it should be uh, the only thing that kind of got a little wrong on this level was that and here's an example. The episode of Puss in Boots with the title sequence. I mean, they did use the font exactly as we remembered, but they somehow, they put it in different ways. Like, they put the title Puss on top and in Boots on the bottom. It was supposed to be in one direction like that, where it just says Puss in Boots with the castle. So That was sort of a little screw up, but hey, they did what they could. And I know sometimes when I watch the show, I mean, I always notice how when they start with the title sequences, they, they always uh, fade in with it together. And, and it seems to me like it just shows up uh, a little late you know, when, when they start these episodes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you got episodes like uh, The Traveling Musicians of Brenham. You got Hansel and Gretel. Uh, the Frog Prince, Little Red Riding Hood, that's one of my favorite episodes of the series. Uh, the Golden Goose, which, it was okay, but you get the idea. 
Uh, you got Puss in Boots. Uh, Snow White and Rose Red, that's another great episode. Um, Snow White, of course. Uh, excellent episode, especially if you put it together with four parts. Um, yeah, they, they do split them in parts, too. I mean, if you saw the Japanese version. But if you put it together in the English dub version, this is exactly how it should be. Uh, despite the fact that, yes, they had to do a lot of editing, you know, trying to remove some of the, the graphic content and all, just to make it more family-friendly. And that's what they did. Uh, the Six Who Went Far in the World. Uh, the Water of Life. Yeah, that was a great one, too. Yeah, Bluebeard, as I mentioned. Uh, Jorinda and Jeringo. Yes, I remember that episode. That's another great one. Yeah, the witch who, who actually had a powerful spell on the Jorinda. And, and uh, that's where she had that song that she sang when she turned into a bird. Uh, Briar Rose, another great episode. Yeah, which is Sleeping Beauty. Old Sultan. Uh, King Grizzle's Beard. The Naughty Spirit. The Worn Out Dance of Shoes. <laughs> and of course, Cinderella. <laughs> um, but they did split them apart. Uh, in the Japanese version, and and they had everything here. Yeah, and also the the Japanese version. Yeah, the quality is excellent too. But it looked like it had been ported from the Japanese uh, DVD um, that came a long time ago. So you notice the quality started to look a little different. But they did what they could. It's it's nice that this set actually puts both versions together on on a BD-50, because I never thought it would be possible, but it is, because <laughs> they're all standard. It's kind of like when they did this with Samurai Pizza Cats when they released it. Uh, they put, like, the English dub versions all together, 51 episodes, and or 52, I think, yeah, 51, and who would have thought they would put all of them together? If only they had put in the Japanese version together with it, it would have been like a two to set. So that would hold. The episode, the, the Traveling Musicians of Brenham, the alternate version actually had a female narrator. So it might have been available from European uh, releases. Like, I think the UK had this. So it kind of makes sense. But the English dub remains the same. And speaking of which, uh, for the English version, they had various uh, voice actors, all of which you may have been familiar with. You know, like uh, Robert Axelrod, uh, Arlene Bannis, Robert V. Barron, Bill Capetzi, Cheryl Chase, yes, who was, of course, best known for as the voice of Angelica and Rugrats. Um, Rebecca Forstad, who I know she's done the voice of Patty Rabbit in Mapletown, among many others. Yeah, Laura Cody from Digimon. Uh, Barbara Goodson, of course, this is the voice of Rita Repulsa in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> but she's done voice acting for other shows. Uh, Steve Kramer, Melora Hardy, uh, Wendy Lee, various shows. Uh, Julia Magdalena, uh, Michael Forrest, um, among many others. So. Uh, they, of course, worked on other popular shows uh, from, um, like, Pokemon, you know, Dragon Ball Z, and other ones. So at least now you know who, who they are when, when you watch these episodes, considering that they did this in the late 80s. Like, they might have recorded this in 1988, particularly, and then 1989, you know, for... for for the other season. <laughs> well, the Japanese version has various uh, voice actors who may have worked on other uh, Japanese anime series around that you're familiar with. They did have this on home video in North America. Yeah, it, it was actually released in you know, various forms. Yeah, they one they first released it on high top video, uh, part of the Fisher Price um, 
license deal that they got, uh, which unfortunately that version was pretty much edited uh, completely, and yeah, I wouldn't recommend that one. Uh, but on the other hand, I mean that's where I got to see uh, Little Red Riding Hood, and which I did saw on Nickelodeon too. <laughs> but I'm just saying that I, I saw that and, and the Fog Prince and all. Um, but then there's also ones that were released by Star Maker. Which they put it uh, together with all the other uh, fairy tale uh, classics, uh, but it was mostly just from a different. I think it was from Rack and Bass, so they put that together somehow. <laughs> and yeah, I got one of those on VHS when I found it at the first store. And they did also release some from uh, Saban Video uh, from Video Treasures. So they actually had plenty of them to join. Yeah, so, so this was the only way to actually watch them at the time. Even though they were not complete. Yeah. But it was also great that they even put it out on DVD from Australia. Yeah, released by Fox Kids. Which only had various episodes um, back in the 2000s. Yeah. So that's... That's how you be able to find all these classic episodes you remember of when you were a kid. <laughs> so I know I'm not the only one. And my brother saw this. Um, my mom saw this. Um, my father saw this. Uh, I think Eileen saw this too. And my sister, of course. Cool. I always remember the intro and the outro, uh, which is based on the the Japanese uh, version. We actually saw the mascot of this flying girl with green hair, almost dressed up a little bit like Little Red Riding Hood there. Uh, just goes around flying around and, and this is where you hear the catchy uh, theme song that's done by Haim Saban and Shusky Levy, you know, the music producers behind other programs um, during those times, especially since Haim Saban you know, owns uh, his production company. It goes like this. Hey, come along and join the fun. It's a time for fairy tales. Magical kingdoms in the sun. Come along, come along. Meet friendly elves and witches too. In the world of fairy tales. Enchant the castles wait for you. Come along, come along to where our love is a fantasy and every story ends so happily. Well, sort of. <laughs> this is the place for dreams come true. A world of fairy tales for you. Yeah. And then they had the instrumental music at the end credits. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's like tears of joy right there. Kind of, it's so it's almost like you know, like all the other anthology series at the time uh, back in the '80s. You know, with mostly horror anthologies like you know, Tales from the Dark Side, the new Twilight Zone, uh, Monsters, and the Bradbury, the yeah, Ray, Ray Bradbury Feeder. Uh, 80's incarnation of um, Alfred Hitchcock presents all that stuff. I mean, yeah, anthologies were very popular in the 80's. And, and they kind of joined in in the 90's too, you know, with Tales from the Crypt. So th this kind of matches pretty well. <laughs> but this is not in the four, uh, but this is focusing on fantasy. Right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and um, it's just so well done. Um, for its budget. So I, I'm very fascinated that, that they did a very great job with this, you know. I was expecting some errors, that's what I was afraid of too. But in the end, terrific. So this is the series to pick up on Blu-ray. Um, you can get it on Amazon. Um, just try to wait for the price to go down to see if you can get it for the best price. I had to get this for $44.60 uh, which ranges all the way down from 
its original suggested retail price of forty nine ninety five, but it was the best I could do. Um, and of course, I got Macaulay Knights for that same price too. <laughs> but therefore, this was the show that aired on Nickelodeon. I loved it ever since. I'm just so happy that they took the the effort and the guts to put them all together and even though it took this long to do so I mean if they had released this like a long time ago that would have been perfect I mean I would have been able to get this uh, in stores and I'm just really happy because I couldn't believe how stunning the animation looked it was actually done by the Pollen Animation you know, the same people that actually have done many uh, shows and movies uh, especially based on the the TV network they got, so they they really knew how to make a very solid uh, transfer and animation that they got from scratch, all hand drawn, and it wasn't very popular as it seems in Japan, but I guess it, it got more of the popularity when it was on Nickelodeon, and it spreads across many countries so. but yes um, they did air it from 1989 all the way until 1995 yes they played on Nick Jr. as part of the lunchbox feeder and then later story time uh, not to be confused with Kino story time it was a block where they get to play episodes uh, along with all these other shows to join in to be part of so that way you know they can teach and learn everything from these uh, wonderful classic stories <laughs> perfect <laughs> so, but for this first season it's only a total of 24 episodes so when season 2 comes there's going to be more which will be known as uh, New Grimm's uh, Masterpiece Feeder in Japan and they'll join together with the English dubs so Hopefully they'll be able to put out the ones that were not broadcast in North America. Now I think that might be true. And also, I guess it might be possible, but maybe they might have some English dub versions of some of the few episodes. I mean, which they claim that it wasn't dubbed, but I, I'm just hoping for the sake of it, you know, they'll be able to put that in there. Yeah. But hey, they'll, they'll do the best they could. So anyway, um, pick this up at your local store if they have it available otherwise you can get it on Amazon, eBay, Walmart.com and good luck <laughs> so anyway that's my Blu-ray review of Grimm's Fairy Tale Classics Season 1 when Season 2 comes I can't wait to do another Blu-ray review of it so anyway I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye